The visuals in the GTA 6 trailer are next level. A technical detail that blew people away was the hair simulation physics. The hair looks super smooth and natural. So today, I'm going to show you how to recreate that hair simulation physics step by step in Unreal Engine 5. I also covered the jiggle physics and bottle liquid physics in my previous tutorials, so check those out too. With that said, it's going to be a very easy video to follow, so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that we have to do is to export our character model into Blender. So yeah, we can't directly create hair inside of Unreal Engine 5, we have to use an external 3D software like Blender or Maya to create hair. In this case, we're going to be using Blender as it's free and really, really good for hair. So let's go to the characters folder, mannequins, meshes, and then in my case, I'm going to be using Queen Simple. Now, of course, if you have your own character, you would export your own character instead of Queen or whatever you want. And I'm going to be also using the Queen Simple instead of the other one because it's just a bit more you know, low poly and performance, which is just a bit better to create the hair. So let's right click on your character, go to asset actions and click on export. Then let's go ahead and find a location where you want to save this new character. In my case, let me put like hair and then export and then click on reset to default and export once again. And that's it. So now let's go ahead and open up Blender. So with Blender opened, let's go ahead and click at any point on the screen, select the three default models and delete them. And now we have an empty new level. So let's go ahead and import our 3D model. So for this, go to file, import, and then FBX as Unreal Engine exported as an FBX type. So go ahead and you search for hair. In my case, it will be this one over here. So you select this, click import with everything by default, and boom, here we go. We have our 3D character. In my case, it's Quinn, but in your case, it might be also Quinn if you're just playing around, but you would have your character over here. So first things first, let's expand here the scene collection, which is a list of, of the objects that we have in our level. And what I want to do is expand this root and expand this over here so you can see it and delete lot one and lot zero and just leave lot zero. OK, so that's just the base mesh. Now, in my case, I have to do this because by default, the Unreal Engine mannequins are well optimized and come in three LODs, which means three level of details just for performance, right? I just want to edit the hair on the last zero. So that's why I delete the other two because it's completely unnecessary. Now, in your character, you might also have LODs. If so, you would do exactly the same. And if not, well, you would just go ahead and skip this, continue on because you might already only have one LOD and that's it. Cool. With that said, I also want to go ahead and select the armature, which is essentially the character skeleton and click this eye icon to hide it. So it's not, you know, disturbing there in the middle of the screen is a bit easier to see. So now with that said, it is time to actually create our hair. So select here the main mesh of your character, which in my case will be the LOD zero. And you can see here that we have the details panel. Similarly to Unreal Engine 5, I mean, you can see that the user interface is very similar to Unreal Engine 5. We have the viewport, we have the outliner, which in this case is called Scene Collection, and then the details panel with all this stuff. So let's go in here into the particles section, and let's create a new particle. And in this case, we're going to rename this new particle to be, guess what? Hair. I'm going to be changing the hair particle to be type hair. And boom, as you can see, <laughs> we see a lot of hair all around. So yeah, we have to edit a few things. So first of all, the number of hair, let's increase it to maybe, you know, instead of 1000, 1500, just to have a bit more of hair. And then not only that, but let's scroll down to the children and click on interpolate. And yes, this will go ahead and add even more hair in between, which will just increase the level of quality of our hair overall. Now everything is looking just like, like mayhem right now, but because we have to go ahead and only specify where do we want to go ahead and put our hair. We don't want to do the whole body just in our head. So we can click on the tab key or additionally, you can click here and go to the edit mode. And now you can just click at any point in the scene. And that's it. We are in this edit mode where we can select specific polygons. And you guessed it. In this case, we want to select the specific polygons where we want to have our hair grow. So over here, let's click on this wireframe view. Well, actually, when I click on lit, but I click on this um, option over here, which will just go ahead and make it so that we are in wireframe view. And this will enable us to select polygons behind 
our selection. Because if I was to disable this and just have this one enabled and select this, as you can see, the polygons on the back would not select. And this is very important. So enable this. Cool. And now with that said, let's go ahead and you zoom in and kind of see where we want to have our hair. So this is just kind of playing around and see what's best. In my case, I'm going to start to do this. And then this. Oh, yeah. So one thing I want to mention is that once you have your initial kind of polygon selection done, hold left shift while dragging so you can add more, you know, obviously over here. I'm going to be expanding this a bit. And I think this is a pretty good, you know, selection of the hair. Of course, you can add more, you can remove more, whatever you want, but the hair will appear in this section. So once we have our vertex selected, let's go here into the data and add a new vertex group. And this new group, let's double click or just click it to rename it. There we go. It will be just hair and click on assign. Very important. Once you click on assign, you can just click on deselect and then select and it should work. OK, so now if I select the hair and I select, it will select this amount of vertices. And this is exactly what we want. So right now we have been saving the polygons into a vertex group. So now we can tell our hair particle to only spawn in the hair vertex group, if that makes sense. So let's go back to our hair particle. And if we scroll down, you will see here a vertex groups. So if I go back to object mode, as you can see, we have a lot of crazy hair everywhere. But if I go to density and search for hair and add it to the hair group, boom, as you can see, we only get the hair on the vertex group that we selected, which is really cool. It is exactly what we want. But still, the hair is a bit too long and too crazy. So let's go up over here. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff. What we want to do is change the hair length. Instead of point, uh, 4, let's do point 0.4. And as you can see, it's a bit better. Now, there's a couple of things that you can additionally do to kind of make it a bit more interesting. What you can do is add a bit of a uh, clump, which will make it a bit more, you know, stylized, or you can change it to be uh, a bit more curly and so on. In my case, I'm going to leave it by default because I think it's okay. But I just wanted to mention that on these settings, you can kind of play around with curly hair and the type of hair and things like that. Okay, cool. So now with that, what we want to do is actually comp the hair and actually make it look a bit more like hair because right now it looks like a crazy woman. So to go up here into the object mode and go into the particle edit. And now we can select by default the first tool, which is comp. And if I just increase the radius around this and the strength to pretty much a one, I can just start to go ahead and comp the hair to be like I want it to be. Okay. And right now, this is going to look very bad initially because I'm doing it quick. But as you can see, we have the hair over here. So now what I can do is just turn down the radius and the strength and just give it a bit more of volume. The front side thing. I can just play around with the hair here. And basically, you know, just uh, make it a bit more realistic because <laughs> it's uh, Look a bit better right now. So go back to object mode. As you can see, the hair is looking pretty, pretty cool. It's still a bit hard to see. So let's disable this wireframe tool. And now we have the hair. It looks a bit bad here on the, you know, front side. So what you can do is just go here and play a bit more with the side. But honestly, for this tutorial, I'm going to just leave it like this. You can spend as much time as possible to get the result that you want. But you have some basic hair, which is really cool. And now with that said, we just want to export the hair. So to do this, what I'm going to do is just select the mesh once again. And on the hair particle section, where is where we customize everything, click on the search bar and search for show. And as you can see that we have a render show emitter, just disable this. And then view per display short emitter, disable this. And now as you can see, we only see the hair, which is the only thing that we want to export. OK, so with that said, and with the mesh selected, very important, make sure that you have selected the mesh, go to file, export and select Alembic because this is the file type that Unreal Engine will use to import the hair. Just find a location and then on the scale, you put this to be 100. OK, this is very important. Make sure that the scale is 100 so that it is compatible with the scale in Unreal Engine 5. The frame end, put it to 1 because there's no animation or anything like that. And then very important on here, click on selected objects and visible objects. So it will only export the hair. 
This is very important, okay guys? Make sure you have these two options enabled, you disable the emitters, and you have the mesh selected. Very important. Scroll down and disable all this stuff because we don't need any UVs, and then make sure that particle systems, you have both enabled. And now with that said, just give it a name, export, and that's it. We can go back into Unreal Engine. So back in Unreal Engine, let's go ahead and enable a couple of plugins. So go up into Edit, Plugins, and search for Alembic, and make sure that you have Alembic Group uh, Group Imported selected, okay? So enable this, and then restart the editor. Additionally, you also wanna enable uh, Groom, but you should already have this enabled by default, so you should be good to go. So make sure these two plugins are enabled, restart the editor, and then you have them enabled. So what we can do now is actually import the hair. So basically drag the file that you exported, which was an Alembic file, into the content browser. And as you can see, we got a window to import the hair. So very important, make sure you copy these parameters, okay? So in the rotation, have the X axis as 90, and for the scale, have everything as one, except for the Y axis, which is minus one. And we're doing this because we're flipping the, you know, vectors and the axis of Blender because Blender has a different, you know, axis direction than in Unreal. And with that said, just click on import, and boom, we have the hair over here. So you save, and if I drag this to the world, there we go, we have our cool hair, which is really, really cool. So let's go ahead and add this hair into our character. So let's go to third person, blueprints, open up third person character blueprint, or whatever character blueprint that you're using, go to viewport, and now what we can do is select the mesh, and add the groom component, as a child of the mesh. Let's name it to have something as hair. Okay, so very important, have it as a child. Now what we can do is go to the groom asset and find the queen hair, which is the one that I imported or whatever you named it. And boom, as you can see, we have the hair over here, which is really, really cool. So if I click on pile, save and press play, we have it over here, it looks really cool. But if I start moving, <laughs> yeah, it's not following the player's head. It looks quite awful just like Lego or something. So I'll go back into the third person character blueprint. And what we wanna do is go ahead and create a binding asset. Now as an alternative, you could also do it a bit more manually and snap the socket to be on the head. So the hair will always follow the head location, but that's a bit of an old technique. The hair in Unreal Engine comes with a really cool feature with the binding. So we go back to the content browser where we had our hair, right click and click on create binding, we can go ahead and select a target skeleton mesh. In this case, remember the one that you exported. In my case, it was queen simple. So I'm gonna select this and create everything by default. And that's it. Click save with this new asset. And what we're going to do is go back here and in the binding, just select this one, which is this one here. Compile, save, press play, and guess what? Now the hair is following our head, so we are nearly there. But we want to enable one thing, which is the most important, which is the hair simulation fixes, just like in GTA 6. So to do this, let's go ahead and open up the queen hair, the original groom asset. As you can see, we have it over here. And what we want to do is go into the physics category, okay? If you don't see any of this, you just go to window and you will find it over here. And then literally just click on enable simulation. Now, depending on the amount of hairs that you added, and on your PC, it might take just a minute. So just don't touch anything, you see like this, and you know, just hopefully will not crash or anything like this, okay? So that's why you have to have two things in mind when doing the hair in Blender, which is the amount of hairs that you add. Because maybe adding more will look better, but if it's less performant, it's something to consider. But anyway, as you can see, the hair is enabled. So now if I press play, and I move around, we have really cool hair physics. How cool is that? Just like in GTA 6. Really, really nice. Now there's some customization that you can do, obviously, in terms of physics. You can change the gravity, the air drag, things like this. In my case, I personally think that this is pretty decent and pretty good, so I'm not gonna modify anything, but just so that you know, you can do that from here. Now also, additionally, you can go to this trans category and change a bit of the hairs you know, tip and the root. So for example, the tip usually is a bit thinner than the root, that's just how real life hair works. So we can put like 0.7 or something like this. This would be a better like transition, you know? And of course you can change the hair width to maybe be 0.5, so basically have it 
uh, so it's just a advisory and then you know you can play around with a lot of stuff with the shadow density and things like that in my case i think it's pretty cool now apart from that what i want to do is go ahead and create a new hair material because yes we can create hair materials right now we have this kind of default one which is like blonde but we can create new hair materials so you go to the content browser we can right click create a material search for m underscore hair or something and open this up and very important we just need to go to the shading model and change this to be hair okay and that will simply go ahead and work and we also want to enable the used with hair strands and that's it now we have the material set up to work with hair so now let's hold the three uh key in your keyboard and press the left mouse button to add a new color node and we can plug the rgb into the base color and we can go ahead and just change this to whatever color we want so we can literally put any color we could put like blue like the orchid games channel branding and i could just go into the hair asset and change the material from here but if it doesn't let you just easier you just go to the groom asset or component and just change the material from here so it will be hair and boom that's it now we have as you can see <laughs> blue hair which is really cool or we can go ahead and just put another type of hair just like in gta 6 I don't remember exactly what tone Lucia from GTA 6 is, but more of a brunette kind of hair. So we can go ahead and just find the color that would match that tone. And there we go. Wow, this is actually pretty, pretty cool as you can see. And we have physics and everything. And it's pretty, pretty cool. And it looks really good. The only thing that might need some improvement is, of course, the, you know, front part over here. But as you might realize, I did that pretty quickly inside of blender so if you were to put a bit more effort and time into the actual customization of the character's hair in blender you would just end up with a better result but this is really cool so that's it guys if you found this video helpful i would really appreciate it if you could like video and subscribe to my channel check all my tutorials in my channel and if you want to download the private files of this tutorial and 800 more from all of my tutorials join my unreal club and now yes with all i said bye bye